bought a non-working Epson sublimation printer on eBay for parts are not working because it doesn't work and we're going to attempt to fix this but first I want to show you what happens when you ship a printer that has ink in it even though you have the box marked this side up and everything else it ends up standing on end and you end up with ink everywhere and I have not un taken this out of the plastic bag and I'm really glad they did put this in plastic because I have one heck of a mess here to clean up before we can even get going on this. But we're going to get into it coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and I get a lot of questions on these Epson printers, Echo Tank printers. This is, I think this is a 2720. That, and I pick these up all the time uh, when for parts are not working when they're cheap enough because most of the time I can fix them. However, put the disclaimer right up front, I'm not affiliated with Epson. I do not have Epson parts. I'm not an Epson technician. I am not a printer expert. I just kind of know how to work on these and how to fix them and how to get them fixed up. This was, according to the uh, description, converted to sublimation ink and now it doesn't print anymore. I don't know why. I'll have to get into that, but right now, as you can see, I've got a huge mess to clean up. I'm going to have to get this out of the plastic with the rubber gloves on and the apron and try to get all this ink cleaned up, and we'll see how bad it's spilled inside the printer as well, because this one might really be a challenge. I won't show all the cleanup, but it's going to be a mess. Okay, I got it out of the bag, and there is, I mean, there's just ink on absolutely everything here. I have no idea how many paper towels and Gojo pads this is going to take to get cleaned up and I've got it sitting on an old piece of cardboard but I mean it I mean even the cord is coated with ink so this is this is quite the mess if you would happen to get ink all over the outside of your printer uh, Gojo pads work very well hand cleaning pads I'm just trying to get the bulk of some of this ink off of here first yeah, this one's going to be fun to clean up. Okay, I got this mostly cleaned up, but now the subject matter of this video is going to change. Uh, the reason being, I plugged it in, and of course it, it didn't come on, so I started doing some troubleshooting, make sure I got power through the power supply, and I've got a meter here that the power supply was outputting to the main board. And once it gets to the main board, it does nothing, so we have a bad main board in this one. So therefore, I'm going to give you a tour inside one of these printers, show you a few things that can give you error codes, and show you some things not to do. Okay, I, I do have this side of the printer taken off because I needed to get into the power supply and stuff here, and there's the side right there. It's still filthy, dirty, nasty, but power plugs in right there. I need to get the power supply out, so that's why that's off. So, let's say you decide you want to open your printer up. There's a couple of screws you need to take out, and whoever had this before had already taken them out, but I'm going to show you where they are. One of those screws is located right here. It'll be a Phillips screw, and there'll be another one underneath the cover here on the opposite corner. Don't just start yanking the top up because you're going to break them. I've, I've worked on these before where people have broken them. So there's number one. Number two item. When you do open it up, I still got ink in there all over. When you do open it up, if you open this too far, the scanner cover can actually come off. And by moving it a little bit to the left, it will come off. But by the same token, when that happens, if you unplug these little ribbon cables down here, you're going to have a hard time getting them back on. It's not impossible, it's just difficult. So if you want to have it open to do some work on it, or maybe look around, Get yourself a little prop stick. And prop it open like that. Now for some reason if you need to access the keypad, maybe replace the, the keypad or to work in the membrane, or in my case to clean all the ink out of it, there's a little cover right here that pops off that also covers a little ferrite cord that the ribbon cable passes through. You would remove that, then there's a screw here, a screw here. Then on this side there's a screw there, and a screw there. 
You can also, if you wish to remove the hinge parts, there's a screw here, a screw here, which will allow you to take that out. Just taking these four screws out here will give you access to the ribbon cable that's on the back of the keypad board. And once you take that out and carefully disconnect that ribbon cable, you can take the board out if you desire to work in the membrane or clean it or whatever you need to do. Okay, so inside the printer, of course on the outside you have your ink tanks. On the inside you have what are I call buffer tanks. There's one for each color here. Black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And they need to be kept in order. And there's little tubes that run through there. There's a plastic cover on those tubes. If this plastic cover comes loose, somebody's had that hose out of there in the wrong place. Well, it doesn't matter, we get a bad board. So, if this comes loose from here, it'll get up in here and, and this will all come loose and this will start making a bunch of racket and you could very easily get an error code. And then you won't know what that error code is, but it's going to have to do with this plastic coming loose. And I worked on one printer and that was actually the only thing wrong with it was this cover had come loose and it got kind of caught up in the mechanism back here and it generated an error code. Now these buffer tanks can come out if you need to work on them or inspect them or mess with them and don't get into this if you don't if you're not sure what you're doing but there's a little lever here you push and then you can raise that up and that will come out and you'll be able to inspect to make sure that it has ink in it. and each one of these should have ink in it if you're finding that your ink tanks out here are full and you're running just you know either my test sheets or you're running uh, head cleaning or even a power clean and the power clean and nothing's working on a, a particular color this is a place to check problems I've found is if this membrane on here and this is just a piece of like cellophane ruptures it'll there it won't be able to create the vacuum to pull the ink in so that would be one problem another problem would be if this down here should get clogged and another problem could be that there is sediment at the bottom of the tank any one of those things can clog this line and prevent the ink from traveling up to where it's supposed to be and you need to keep these in order and you need to put them back in exactly like you took them out there's little guides right up here to keep that in where it's supposed to be and when you put it back in make sure it goes down and snaps in like it's supposed to if it's not snapped in all the way it won't work I'll take the yellow one out here to show too so this should have ink in it of course this printer must have been upside down or something or I wouldn't have had ink all over the place but every one of these will come out so and you're, you're, you'll be able to inspect each one of them again when you put them back in make sure they click down where they're supposed to so I still got ink all over the place even though I've done a lot of cleaning Another thing I want to show on this is right here where your, your ink tubes lay. They have to lay in their specific way. Uh, this one originally was laying pretty much on top of the uh, yellow line and it was kinked. So you, there wouldn't have been any black getting to where it needed to be. Uh, like I said, somebody had had this open before I purchased it so they were probably looking to see why it wouldn't power on. So that's something to keep in mind too. Make sure each one of these lays where it's supposed to if you're in there messing around with this. Okay, I have the side off over here so I, you can get a good view of this. Be also because I was working with the power supply. These are the ribbon cables for the scanner top. If you should happen to let this thing come off of there and those come unplugged, they need to be plugged back in. And it can be a little bit fiddly and a little bit tricky. Uh, this one here is actually glued to the top, but you can pop that glue off. And you'll see by the factory bends and everything where it plugs back in. If these are not plugged in, although the printer will power on, it won't do anything. You'll get error codes. You, if that scanner top is not hooked up, you won't be doing anything. This particular one here goes to the keypad. These two down here below go to the scanner bed. Okay, back here in this corner, this is what's called the maintenance tank. 
and it is replaceable if you can find one. That's the problem is for a 2720 it's hard to find one. Uh, I don't think Epson offers it. There are some aftermarket places that do. There's one screw right here you take out and you can take your maintenance tank out. There's a little hose that plugs into the top. Some places sell refills for refilling the inside of those. I've never tried that. Okay, there's a cover that goes on there. Got it right here. You'll notice right here there's little keyways. On the back of the cover is a screw you take out. And it's laying right here. And I'll show you how to put this back on. When you take that screw out, you need to slide this cover back to have it come out of that keyway. Don't try to pry it off or do this or you're going to break it. So to put it back on after you've done whatever, you'd put that into place, slide it forward, and put your screw back in. And again, taking it out, you don't pry out, you pull back, which is hard to do with one hand. And it comes out like that, and I got more ink on me now. Ink everywhere on this thing. Okay, the cleaning pads, they are right there. That's the cleaning pads, that's what, when you do a head cleaning, that's where the uh, ink goes, and then it gets run back through a hose and into the maintenance tank. With the maintenance tanks right back there, there's a hose on the top of it. So if you get an error that that maintenance tank needs to be replaced, uh, that error code, I don't remember what the number is, but this is also not an easy part to find for the 2720. Then you will also need to do a reset, ink chip reset, same as if you need to do your maintenance tank and you get an error code that's reached end of service life, you'll need to do a reset. And I do not have those codes. I know there's uh, aftermarket places on Amazon and whatever where you can download that stuff, purchase it. Okay, another thing that may be preventing your ink from flowing is if the vents get plugged. So each one of these tanks, you know, you open them up, you stick your ink bottles on there and you put your ink in, you close them all up. There's a little vent on the top of each one of these and if that gets plugged up, it will create a vacuum inside and will not allow the ink to flow. So that's another thing that could possibly happen if you're having a problem. And this one here is real easy to see the vent on because this is the one that leaked black ink all over the inside of that box. In fact, that tank is almost empty. Okay, the side cover here. There are little tabs. That one up there is gone for some reason. These need to fit into holes in the base. And when you're taking this off, don't just go like this because you'll break them. These little tabs have to fit down into those holes in the side. It'll be like so. Another thing, if you've watched any of my previous videos on working on these Epson printers and you've got clogged nozzles, and I have told, I don't know how many hundred times I've written the same reply. You know, I tried running the color sheets. I tried doing the, you know, the power clean. I, I, nothing works, you know, my... Cyan doesn't print or magenta doesn't print or yellow and black are fine or it's printing pink or something and I've done everything. I don't know what else to do. Here is something that works about 90% of the time. Pick your printer up and just do this for a while. You know, just a couple minutes. Don't get wild with this. You're going to have ink splattering all over out the vents. But if you just shake your printer Hook it back up. You may need to run the head clean a few times if you're running my color sheets. It may take 20 of them. But a lot of inks, I shouldn't say a lot of inks, but some inks will actually form sediment in the bottom of the ink tanks if you're not using your printer frequently. You know, if your printer is sitting for weeks and weeks and weeks and then you go to print and nothing's working, that's something that could have happened. Now, if some of that sediment actually got up into the line or forgot up into the buffer tank, then that's a whole other thing of cleaning and you're going to have to do a lot of work. One of the things you can do is to carefully disconnect the hose from the buffer tank and get a syringe from like the drugstore. No, you don't need, need any needles, just the syringe. And try to blow air back through to your ink tank and then try to pull ink back through that tube and then make sure your buffer tank is in a good shape and the cellophane isn't ruptured or anything and that it's seated properly. 
There's a whole lot of different things that can happen to cause your what everybody thinks is their head is clogged up. And it's not the head, it's the actual lines going to either the buffer tank or the buffer tank isn't seated properly, or there's a vent plugged up, or you have some sediment in there. So there's some things that you can look for on one of these printers. I had hoped to show a little bit more with this one, but it has a bad uh, motherboard, main board, and I do not have one to replace it with. So I'll be saving this for parts for other printers that I work on. Again, I'm not affiliated with Epson. I am not an Epson technician or anything like that. I just have worked on a lot of these and I have quite a bit of experience with it. I hope that gave you some ideas. I hope I showed you how to open your printer and work on it without breaking stuff because I've uh, purchased others of these that, you know, it doesn't work anymore and I'm going to hear $20 you can have it. And they've broken parts because they didn't know how to take it apart or open it up properly. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. And i got to wash my hands again. Incidentally, that stuff works great for getting ink off of your hands and printers. Because I used two sheets of this to clean this up. And you saw how bad it was. So, Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.